Telecast sponsored by Applebee's. Telecast sponsored by El Paso Community College. Live from Plains Capital Park, Lowry Field in Lubbock, KVIA-TV ABC7 is proud to bring you a special Borderland Blitz presentation. It's the Texas Class 5A Division II semifinal game between Canateo and Ennis. The 2014 Canateo Eagles making history. They're the first El Paso area team to reach the state 11-man semifinals. Tonight, they face perennial powerhouse Ennis. West meets East in the UIL 5A state semifinals. For a unique and unprecedented Division II state semifinal showdown between the Conalty Eagles and the Ennis Lions. This should be a lot of fun. We've talked about history all week, and that's why we're bringing this game. And it's historic for not just ABC7, but also, of course, for the Conalty Eagles, a chance to do something no other team in El Paso has ever done, and that's play for a state title. Conalty has been on a magical run, winning 13 straight games. Their last loss, Louis, was back in August to Franklin. Since then, they've been red hot. Yeah, it feels like... A, a lifetime ago, but they've been doing it with defense. They got on this hot streak, four shutouts, averaging 11 points to, to, to opponents, looking very good. But let's get to how both teams got here. Ennis, first off, they were red hot throughout the playoffs. They defeated Sulphur Springs in their bi-district matchup, then defeated Mansfield Timberview, then Colony, then they went on to defeat South Oak Cliff, and now they're here in this game. Now, Canateo took on Isleta, and they mm -hmm. took care of business in the bi-district. They went on to defeat Lakeview, then Azel in a low-scoring 17-10 win, and then last week, of course, winning on a 27-yard field goal or a field goal with 27 seconds to go at 17-14. So as you can see, low-scoring games for Canadillo, but they find a way to stop other teams from scoring. That's really what has gotten to them to this point. And while Canadillo is right in that 13-game win streak for Ennis, it's a 12-game win streak. They lost their first two games of the season. They've been red hot as well ever since. They have four state titles in their history, most recently 2004 with Graham Harrell, the Texas Tech star quarterback at the helm. And most recently, they were here last year. They lost to Alito in the state semifinals. So they want payback. I talked to head coach Jack Oliver as he's been at Ennis for four years. But before that, he won two state titles at Kirbyville in Class 2A. So he knows what it's all about. He said he likes his team. They're high character guys, and they want to get further than they did last year. And again, they've done a great job. And they have 32 seniors, which is great. And you spoke with them. I spoke with Scott Brooks. They have 42 seniors. They have kids that have played together since they were five so to him they say hey we have this experience we have this chemistry we get to this point we can we can overtake any town or anyone else has if we can play our kind of deal football and uh, they're here right? they have a shot at a state title well let me know again this is a borderland blitz production that's why we're in a blitz shirt and it's unprecedented unique coverage here at abc7 we are so proud to be bringing you this exclusive content we can't wait should be a great game we're gonna take a quick break we'll be back with the starting lineups and the keys of the game but actually, they were offsides on the kickoff, so you didn't miss a thing. We do apologize, but we're back here again in Lubbock. This really is a beautiful stadium. Rick Cabrera alongside Louis Del Rio, and we are just seconds away from the official kickoff of this Class 5A Division II state semifinal showdown, Ennis versus Conatheo. And we got here early, and we went down to the stands, and we were hanging out with the Conatheo fans, and we got some videos, we took some pictures. They are ready to go. This field holds about, the stadium holds about 8,700, and I got to say, uh, I would say at least what? Close to half, maybe a quarter. I, I would say three quarters on this side. And right, this is absolutely. below us. It's hard to see, but it certainly looks good at this point. Like it's going to be a well, loud and fans. boisterous crowd. Those kind of Theo fans were, were, who are ready to go an hour before kickoff. We passed a lot of them on the way over here. DSS, we finally figured out what exactly. that means. Exactly. Right? Hashtag DSS. That was on all of the cars driving up here. It means do something special. They're trying to do that. And by special, we mean the first ever El Paso school to reach a state title game. And here we go. Kickoff ready to go. Ennis and Canatillo. Rick, you ready? We're ready. I Let's think, do I this. Think El Paso's ready. We want to thank the Lubbock ISD for making this possible, along with our title sponsors, Applebee's and El Paso Community College. Here is your opening kickoff. It's number 17. Taking it back. He's got the edge. He's got the corner. He's out and past the 50 yard line, tackled about the 41 yard Wilson, line. D. Wilson, Wilson pushed Wilson. out right there at the 40 yard line. So a nice start right here. And this is exactly. What Scott Brooks was talking about, Tag special play, teams. He talked about 30, special teams trying to stop the other team from moving the ball. And right there, right off the bat, nice run by Ennis. Again, the key to the Gunnery defense all year has been their defense. They've got to run, and that's something they're going to need to stand up right away and get started with Ennis now having the ball with a first down at the 41-yard line. So our keys to victory for Gunnery, we spoke with Scott Brooks. He said three things had to happen. One, establish the run game. They're going to have to run the ball. They have five players over 300 yards on the ground. They're going to have to do that. They want to get and win this game, but let's check out the first play here. 
Coach Doc Alves tells me he runs a more basic offense for the most part. Nothing too fancy. They're not going to go four wide or anything like this. This is Devin Smith dropping back to pass. Already under pressure, but he does find Taylor Thompson, who gets a few yards and will be knocked out of Devin bounds. Smith and, that, and that is the running back for Ennis, the 5'8 senior. Uh, he's been coming out of the backfield. He leads the way for them. And as you can see, he can come out of the backfield and he can do a lot of things. So we can play. get him Second we can down stop and five. Him. Led the team to 21 the touchdowns this year from the running back spot. We've now got a second down and five. We'll get just minutes into this state semifinal showdown between Ennis and Donald Again, it's Devin Smith under center for the Lions. D. Wilson in motion. And they go up the cut. Again, it is. Taylor Thompson finally Stop stacked right up, but he just gets past that first down. Looks like he does have the first though. Number three, Taylor that's Thompson as you on can the see, carry. Get the first down, but you can see that swarm of defensive kind of deal. They get right to the point of the ball, and they make sure that at least don't let them get Tackled to by the next host level. Of Eagles, led host by number nine, Anthony Morales, isn't intimidated by anybody at this point. They really have a chip on the shoulder, and they play that Gate way. Absolutely not. Play. At this point, when you get here and you're in the state semifinal game, you're, you're all in at this point, and you're just first going down. with what has worked all season. And as we know, defense and running the ball, so hopefully defense here can stop him. As Ennis is moving, they're at the 30-yard line. First down and 10 from the 31-yard line for the Lions. It's a swing pass knocked down by the Canotillo defense. Nice play by the Canotillo defense right there. Number five, Josh Gutierrez, Gutierrez with the nice pass hat down complete. right there. See, that is something they've been doing all year. All year they're doing that. They're getting to the point of the ball, and that's exactly what they did there. It, good for them, at least a little momentum, a little confidence right there off the bat on first down. That kickoff, not what Coach Brooks was looking for, but certainly looking much better now at this point. We've got a second and 10 again. That ball second down and 10 line. for the Lions at the Canyon Teal 31 We are yard less line. than a minute into this state semifinal showdown. You would think they get it and go back and run the ball here. They had success on it. They do have some bigger receivers, and somehow he hands on, hangs on to that ball. Thompson with a nice looking Devin catch Smith there. Pass complete to number the little three, guy again. Taylor that's Thompson. his second pass coming out of the backfield. The they do have more height than the than the Eagles, but that was actually the shorter running back they threw right. to there. But if you look on the wings, the they do play. have more height. Number eleven, Dante Thompson is six foot six. We got a first down and ten from the fifteen yard they line. Seem to be in that hurry up. They seem to be coming right out. That's one of their better running racks. Trey there Elliott with the handoff one, there. He gets Trey the pitch and goes the nowhere from that swarming gun of the defense taking three. care of business. Frank this is years. one of the reasons why they've held teams to 11 points per game. Right there to the point of the ball. They get to the running back. Now, again, they're going to have to see, okay, they're going to get and run the ball. They're going to have Thompson come out of the backfield. That's Austin one thing it looks like they're going to have to worry about is Thompson getting in there into, into, into linebacker territory. Elliott was one of their star running backs before he injured his neck earlier this season. The he's been kind of touch and go ever since, but he's in the game right now in the tellback spot. We've got second and 12 from the 17-yard line. Dropping back to pass, looking. He's got his six foot six receiver, and he breaks a tackle, slips through two more, out of bounds at just about the two yard line. Dante Thompson with a nice looking snag, broke that one tackle and managed to get himself inside the two yard line. So we've got a first down here at the two yard line. And this kind of field defense is going to need to stop, and they're going to need one in a hurry. What it looked like there, uh, Roger Soto seemed to have slipped there at the five yard line. Uh, when Thompson came off for some cushion. That's something that you have to watch here. Quick hurry up on first down. They give it to Thompson. He slices through. Cannot quite get to the end zone. He's short just a few inches from that goal line. It'll bring up a second and goal from the basically six-inch line. Now you have to look here at the six-inch line. They can either keep continue to run the ball or now they can use that height advantage with Thompson on the outside. 6'6". Six, six. Canatillo does not have one D back over 5'10". So they can maybe throw a little fade here into the corner, but uh, they have a lot of options. Canatillo's going to have to be ready for this. Thompson had 14 touchdown catches this year. He's here on the right side of your screen as we look from the goal line. And it's a quarterback keeper, Devin Smith, stopped at the goal line. He did not get in. If anything, he lost defense. yards. What a beautiful play right Devin there. The he didn't seem to know where to go, quite honestly, Stop when he short. got that handoff. He tried to go right up the gut behind the center. It didn't work. He went to the left a little bit. Big, big time Gutierrez tackle. Gutierrez again. And that's something Third exactly what Ganatio has been doing all year. Continue, the teams have gone into, into the five-yard line. They continue to stop teams from getting into the end zone. Their red zone defense has been great this year, and it's on display right now. Granted, Third down and one. We're early in the game, but this is a huge play right here. The pitch, and it's their big guy breaking the tackle to get in. 
Trey Elliott one, Trey his Elliott. way in, his 15th touchdown of the year, and it puts touchdown. the Lions on top early. We're just three minutes into this game, and it is 7-0. Lions on top, 6-0 until we get that extra point, excuse me. But I will tell you that the Eagles were able to make those stops on first and second down, but they had a lot of third down conversions on that drive. I believe there were three for the Eagles. I mean, for the Lions, I should say. And they looked very impressive on that drive. They mixed it up with pass, run, passing to the receivers, passing to their running back. So kind of deal. It's got to be ready, but kind of deals always come back. And we'll see right now after the break if they can come back and tie this we'll up. We'll see if that makes a difference. Not the missed field goal. With nine minutes right to go in the first quarter, you're Lions, with nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Six. Can you T.O. Eagle? He missed that? Javier Gomez, the star senior quarterback under center. Coach Brooks telling us they like to run, and they like to run a lot. And here they go. On first down, Andrew Alacon can't get there. Actually, it's Gomez keeping it, coming the other way. Number 10. But he's Javier tripped up Gomez. after just a Number very, keeper. very short game. Well, no surprise there. They go right to their go-to play on the option. They fake the handoff. Gomez keeps it and can't get anything. Some athletic defenders uh, led by. Mr. Lockhart? <laughs> yes, we should mention James Lockhart. No the on the six play. foot Second four D end for, the, for the Lions, who has committed to Texas AM. He is very talented. Here's Gomez rolling out. He's going to keep it. No, he decides to throw it. It's over the head of Sivan Guillen, his wide receiver. Didn't seem like Guillen was quite ready for that pass, and Gomez couldn't decide if he was going to run it or throw it. So that'll set up third down and 10. Now, speaking of Lockhart, he's going up against Jonathan Voigt, who's the big left tackle for Canatillo, the only D1 bound player for the Eagles. He's headed to Air Force, so that's going to be a matchup to look for. The DN Lockhart against the left tackle, Jonathan Voigt. Hopefully he can stave him off and give Gomez a chance to either throw or run the ball and see his reads. That'll be on the left side of your screen, number 76, John Voigt. The Air Force Academy commit versus James Lockhart, number nine. He's the stand at the end. Here's Gomez rolling to his right. He's looking under pressure, and there's Keen with the sack. Drake Keen takes him down there at the 20 yard line. Big loss for the Donald Theo offense at that point. The Eagles offense not able to get anything going. They're going in the wrong direction. That was Keen's ninth sack of the game. This is something we talked about before the game started, Louie. The fact that the Lions defense has a lot of sacks this season with eight from Keene. That's now his ninth. And then again, we talked about how good James Lockhart is. He had 11 sacks this season. When you look at this team, you're talking about some athletic, athletic players that are some top-notch guys. How about Keene? Six, two, John 210 the pounds. Punt, the end around. They fake the end around, the reverse, and down at the 41-yard line is the Lions as they take the possession of the ball for a second series here. Already up 6 nothing. They fake the reverse, and then Thompson keeps it, makes a couple of men miss, but eventually taken down just outside the 40-yard line. So not, not as good as field position for the Lions as the first time with the kickoff return, but here at their own 40, Kennedy is definitely going to have to step up here. As we said on the third, we, we got to our keys of victory. We never got to our third one. Our third one is keeping this game low scoring. Coach Scott Brooks said he wants this game in the teens or low 20s. Uh, to do that, they're going to have to make a stop here. Dropping back to pass is Smith. He's looking down the field just over the outreach tips of number eight for the Lions. Tried him. Bo Brooks. Johnson, the target on that pass, but it was too high for him. Bo Brooks uh, sep uh, breaking up that pass. Of course, Scott Brooks, head coach's son, Bo Brooks, right there, playing well. Uh, one of the lead tacklers on the team, 108 tackles this season. Pass deflections, he showed right there his athleticism. Brings up second out and 10 from the 41 yard line. Devin Smith under center. They go up the gut with. The run and the gun of the defense will have no part of it. Stuffed after just a very, very short two-yard gain. It'll bring up third and eight for the Lions. Oof, you see those linebackers come in and really sniff that out. Great play right there by Gutierrez and Anthony yeah, Meraz. Third and eight for the Lions. So you can really see that chemistry with this linebacker core when they go up the middle and get into that second level. These guys really know how to fly to the ball. They have been quick to the ball, without a doubt, at this point. To get the ball back quickly, this would really be a, a, a big break for Connell Theo at this point. Unable to get anything going offensively in that first series on defense. Didn't go like they'd hoped the, and how they'd been playing all season for the most part. This offense, you can't ask for a better than third and eight. 
on the end around. There it is. The Lions know where to go as the play is stopped right away. Anthony Merez again back to back tackles. This ball kid can get to the ball flying, and now they force a three and out by the Lions, and now they got a chance here. Dustin Johnson with nowhere to go as Peter Torres is also there in on that tackle. So back to punt now is the Lions. Fourth down and five for the Lions. For the Lions drive, Cody Brooks said for the Lions, special team plays are going to be big in this game. Maybe they can make one here. That had that blocked field goal against him. Had a punt, a long punt in that last game against Everman that was called back. Oh, a block. blocked punt by number five, and they're picking it up. It's a live ball. They can't seem to get on it, and finally they do a block. And there we go, kind of deal. The guy that, the break they need. And there it is. We spoke with Scott Brooks, and he said, how are we going to win this game? We need to make plays on special teams, and they did it right there. A blocked punt early in this game, and now they have great field position to get ahead and make a move. Great play by special teams. I believe that was Josh Gutierrez who was playing lights out to start off this game. Already been involved with four or five tackles. There he gets his hand up, and then they fight over the ball eventually. The gun of the Eagles both battling for that ball, and they recover. We're going to have a first down and 10 at the 21-yard line. This is a huge, huge play for the Eagles. This could be the kind of momentum swing they need at this Lowell point. Yeah, they said they wanted to the I have a feeling these coaches Network. know what they're talking about, huh? He said special teams. <laughs> Listen, Coach All Brooks has been at Gunner Theo for 16 years. He knows what he's talking about. And he comes from a li uh, long line of coaches. And certainly Don Brooks, has co had his dad and his head coach at Coronado at one point. So here we go. First and 10 for the Eagles. Javier Gomez up the gut. Gives it up the gut to number 22, Joe Gutierrez, for a short, short gain on first down. Tackle on the play by number 9, James Lockhart. And number 58, Brian Nelson. Gated three yards on the play. Yeah, there you go. Second down chipping and seven. Away, chipping away. That's what they want. They, want, the to, they want to hold on to this ball and move to the Second and line. seven for the Eagles at their own 19 yard line. Javier Gomez out of the shotgun, right in the spread. He gives it to number 17 on the end around. Nothing Sniff doing. Ben Galavis right ben there. On the carry. Mm. Galavis, one of the players that Coach Brooks told us could outrun this defense. He doesn't have a lot of speedsters, but he feels like Galavis is one of them. But nothing cooking there. Absolutely. Galavis, 400 yards on the ground this year, five touchdowns. But right there, there was nothing he can do before he even had the ball. The defense was already past the lineman in the, and in the backfield. Jake Turner with a nice-looking tackle there for Ennis. So now third and 12. Third and 12 for the now this Eagles. Is, this is an interesting spot for the Eagles because they don't pass the ball much. Let's see what they do here. Try the middle screen. But taken down right away by, once again, it's Drake Keen sniffing out that middle screen. Nothing doing. It brings them fourth down. Will they go for the field goal? I'd assume they would. It would be about a 38-yard field goal from this point. Fourth and ten for the Eagles. I think that's one thing they're going to try and avoid all night, and that's going to be those, those third and longs. Third and longs are going to put this offense in a very sticky situation. But here, hey, it's only 6 nothing. They can have a chance to cut this lead in half right here. Frank Avila for that 37-yard field goal. Up. And good. Great kick by the kid. This kid has been red hot throughout the playoffs. He had that game-winning field goal last week. And there we go. Makes it 6-3 to three right now. The Lions on top with four minutes to go. With four Welcome back to Plains Capital Park in Lubbock, Texas. It is a 6-3 to three lead for the Lions of Ennis over the Conotheo Eagles. Again, ABC7 proud to bring you exclusive and unprecedented coverage of the state semifinal showdown, the Class 5A Division II semifinal game. Again, the Eagles looking to make history as they take on the Ennis Lions. Again, they just got that short field goal, 37 yards. Here is the kickoff. Four minutes to go here in the first quarter. It's a short kickoff. The Lions take it, looking for a hole. He finds a spot. D. Wilson spins out of a tackle before being taken down at the 38-yard line. And again, with a very nice run. Obviously, that one was a short kickoff. But Ennis continuing. They, they have playmakers, and they're continuing to show them on display right here. They get the ball at their own 38 to start. So not as great field position as they have, but hey, starting at your 38 is not too bad. 
For those who don't know, Ennis is a city about 40 miles southeast of Dallas-Fort Worth, yet they don't consider themselves part of the Metroplex and mostly play schools in East Texas, and they say they're used to these long road trips. Coach Alvarez telling me going three hours on a road trip, in this case six hours, is no big deal for them. They think of it as a business trip. First and 10 for the 37-yard line for the Ennis Lions. Devin Smith under center. The handoff. Slipping a tackle, but nowhere to go for number the most three, part. Taylor Thompson, on Taylor the Thompson with a short pickup on first down. Tackle and on the Bo play Brooks again on the tackle, Jesse as we said, Roscoe. 108 tackles. Just right up there with the lead for Gunner Dio. He yards continues on the play. to Second sniff out the ball. Six. Look at that defense. This is what they've been doing all year long, is getting to the ball, not allowing the running backs to get into the second level of the defense. Second and six from the 42-yard line. If they could somehow get a three and out, that would certainly be a feather in the cap of the Eagles at this point. Dropping back to pass is Devin Smith. He's looking for his big, tall, wide receiver, and he catches it over the shorter Eagles receiver. Donta Thompson, six foot six, nice looking grab. And this is exactly what we said. He caught that over Roger Soto. Roger Soto, 5'9". Thompson, 6'6". Six, six. This is something we said that they were going to exploit. We expected them to do a little early. Now they're getting to it. You just throw it up, let them catch it. At this point, it's physics. It's not really, it's just physics. Throw it up, let them get it. Again, quick snap, and they are looking for Thompson out of the backfield. It's a swing pass. He has a little bit of room. Tight ropes the sideline before getting knocked out after about an eight-yard gain on first down. What you want to hope is at this point, this, this Eagles defense doesn't get tired as they continue to move the ball. Uh, quick huddles. They get in, they get out, they're moving the ball, they're getting to their different playmakers all over the field. Hopefully the Eagles can somehow maintain their cool. Second and one from the 20-yard line. We have three minutes left here in the first quarter. It's 6-3 to three Lions over the Eagles in the state semifinal game here from Lubbock, Texas. Smith dropping back to pass, looking. He floats it up toward the end zone. No one there, though, for the most part. Nice defense by the Eagles. He was again Devin looking Smith for Thompson. No surprise there, Louie. I'd like to see if our guys can give us the replay on that. It looked like it might have been offensive on the pass play. interference here. By number four, Mark Gutierrez. No. Looks like he just had some good there, inside, inside position on that play. A little over his head, though, by Smith. Smith threw for 21 position. touchdowns and 2,300 yards this year, so he knows what he's doing back there. Again, this is an Ennis team with 32 seniors on the roster. Made it to the state semifinals last year before losing to Alito. Couple of play action fakes. He spins out of a tackle. He was looking to throw and he still does. He finds Thompson inside the 10 yard line. Got up deal with a real chance there to make something happen. Get a little chippy there between some of the linemen behind the play as well. Nice looking play by Smith. Able to break that tackle, spin out of that, and still find his man Thompson for a 10 yard game. And that's where it, it can become frustrating. Where you think you have the quarterback down, you've read it properly, you read the, the play, and then you just have a guy wide open. The quarterback just makes an athletic play, gets out, dumps it off, and they get a first down. And now they're inside the Eagles' five-yard line. First and goal for the Lions as they look to add to their lead. Smith dropping back. He was looking for Thompson again. We have a penalty. And that was the fade that I was calling for earlier inside the five. Looks like they're going to go to it there. This is going to be this is going to be something. Start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. First down. Five-yard penalty on the false start. It's going to move him back. It's going to set up a first and goal from the 11-yard line. Everyone at home, that's definitely going to be something we're going to have to look out for. These smaller cornerbacks trying to get position in on these taller receivers. It looks like Ennis is going to try and exploit that all night. I'll tell you what, Louie, I haven't played quarterback since I was in eighth grade, but I'm looking for my tallest receiver if I'm the quarterback, Devin Smith, that's for sure. Smith looking to change up his lineup a little bit here. The end around, someone's in the backfield, but he finds Thompson again on the swing pass, and he breaks the tackle on his way to the end zone for another Lions score from 11 yards out. Give the Lions six more points here in the first quarter. Yeah, and on that play, you're talking about just a running back who slipped out of the backfield, something he's been doing all night. He gets free and, uh, and uses a, uh, that athleticism to get into the end zone, and it's a 12-3 game. It looks like they're going to go for two to get that point back. They missed on that first extra point on that first score in the first quarter. Again, look at number 11 there on the, the left side of your screen. Dropping back, he pumps and looks, and he gets his receiver for the two-point conversion, and that is Jake Lockhart, the tight end. Not play tight end, he's going as a 
defensive end, but he does play some tight end. You just saw it right there. And speaking of size, play. you're talking about a 6'3", 230-pound tight end. Holding. Off hits. Number 78. So the penalty for holding pushes back, and it negates the two-point conversion. you got to wonder if he'll still go for two at this point. I think you just kicked the extra point because it is a much further Holding. try at Number this point. Up. And it looks like the extra penalty. point unit is coming out the on the field. Point. But again, the holding call called it back, but you saw that 6'3", 230 frame oh, just get position. There were eagles all around him, and he still made the play. Brandon. He already missed one field goal early. We'll see if he can convert the field goal this time. This is Brandon Martinek with the extra point try for Ennis. And he missed this and he, one. Yeah. So there's where the holding penalty plays a big role as the extra Lions get the two-point no conversion. It's called back to the hold. So with two minutes left quarter, in the first quarter here at the state semifinal, it's Lions 12, 12 Eagles 3. Eagles. Brandon Martinique about to kick it off for the Ennis Lions. Back to receive Ben Galaviz and Caleb Gossio. And it's Gossio, one of the faster players on the Lions team. He finds a seam, gets through, gets to about the 34-yard line, and the Eagles will have a first down from the 34-yard line as they trail in this game 12-3 with just two minutes left in the first quarter. Pivotal drive for the Eagles here, down 12-3. You don't want to go three and out. You don't want to give Ennis the ball again before the first quarter even ends, give them a chance to move the ball again. So pivotal, pivotal drive for the Eagles. Maybe not to score, but at least to establish some sort of time of possession here and hold on to the ball and get some, get some rhythm on offense. Defense has been out there a lot in this first quarter. Absolutely. Give the defense a break as well. Again, Coach Brooks tells us they run the spread, but to run the ball, not to pass the ball. The handoff up the gut. And it's a short gain for the Eagles on first down. Early in this game, when you look at it, really, Louie, you see a couple of mistakes by the Lions really cost them. They might have the lead on the scoreboard, but you've got that missed extra point. Now two missed extra points. You have the blocked field, uh, blocked punt, rather, excuse me. And you also have the, the holding call that made that two-point try that they converted, negated it. And Canadio has that lightning speed to break away one play right here and score. And ultimately, it puts them in position to take the lead as they continue to go on because they're going to continue to be points up on the Lions. Javier Gomez gives it to Andrew Alacón up the middle. You know, I, I'm starting to notice here they're continuing to go up the gut, and I think they realized that by the games that have passed with Ennis. It looked like a lot of the teams playing Ennis had success going up the gut and getting away from those talented DNs. Looks like Kenneth was trying to do that, but for some reason they just cannot get past these guards up front for, for Ennis. Brings up a second and about six to go at third and five, excuse me, rather. Third and five here for the Eagles. Final minute of the first quarter. This time Gomez keeps it, tries to slip the corner, but he cannot as he's taken down in the backfield. Jordan Webster. Jordan Webster, another name. We don't even get to some of these guys with all the other players. And Jordan Webster around the end and just brings down Gomez. A loss of five right there brings up fourth and ten for the Eagles here. Quarterback Gomez still not really able to find any traction. He's had a couple of keepers, which have actually turned into losses for the most part at this point. Nightmare situation for the Eagles, as we said. A three and out was not something that Scott Brooks wanted. John Luna putty for the Eagles. Taylor Thompson looks like he's going to take it. Catches about the 22. Spins out of a tackle and gets it up to the 33-yard line. That's where the Lions will have a first down.